everything about this skyscraper is exactly what you want. But I want you to open your eyes and look at me. The problem with your penthouse suite is it's in the Millennium Tower and it's sinking. Marks the first step, a plan to stop the sinking and tilting, but... If you don't have God's love as the foundation for your life, literally you'll find your value of your life going down, down, down. Homeowners in luxury San Francisco high-rise are furious this morning over their sinking investment, you could call it. A spider web of, of cracks that you have to be concerned about what's going on in the and so here's the thing, God will build a life for you that you almost cannot explain. But the love of God is absolutely foundational for your life. Welcome to Wednesday's edition of Jumpstart. I hope that you had. Um, sometimes, y'all, that song is in my head, and I've said it before, um, and it's probably trash. I don't know. I don't listen to bad music. I hardly listen to music at all except worship. But it's that song, Good Morning, Beautiful. How was your night? That's what I'm thinking today about you guys. I hope you guys had a wonderful night's sleep. I hope you're excited as I am today today that his mercies are new every single morning. That is so incredible. I am so grateful that God is so intentional in our design and he literally gives us like 24 hours and then we reset. And for us, obviously we're, we should be sleeping um, some of those hours. Then we need to start fresh. I want to encourage you like teenagers from the youngest that are watching this broadcast to the oldest, like start fresh every day. That's why it's so important that you're doing things like this, that you're hearing the word of God um, first thing in the morning. But I even encourage you, David said early King David, who wrote Psalms, uh, the first, actually, I call him the first, even though he actually followed King Saul, but King Saul was kind of a little cray cray king. But um, King David, the man that God said is the man after my own heart. Why? Because he will do the things that I say um, until he didn't. But anyway, King David said, early in the morning, will I seek you? Now, I'm not trying to get anybody under any sort of pressure or, or legalism as it pertains to the exact time and how long you spend with God. But if you can just begin to cultivate the habit of time with God first thing in the morning, it helps you get your head on straight as it pertains to the plan that actually matters. Because the world has an agenda for you. And, and in many ways, we kind of embrace that, that agenda. I know when I went to Bible school, um, several years ago, uh, several moons ago, um, uh, so we would carpool in the morning when I first started school, like my first year of school. And so I had traveled as an intern and many of you guys know, um, my incredible husband wasn't my husband at the time, but we met as interns. So there were like four boys and four girl interns. Well, um, 
I was the only girl intern that was going to be going to Bible school in the fall. So the only friends that I had made in Tulsa were interns with me. Well, they weren't going to Bible school. They were either going back home or one of them, I think, was still in high school. And so she wasn't going to Bible school, but several of the guys were. And so Greg had already been at Bible school a year ahead of me. So he knew a lot of people. So when Bible school first started, what I would do is I I lived far away from school, about 20 minute, about a 20 minute drive. He lived right across the street from school. So I would go to he and his brother's house and we would carpool from there to school. So basically I was their chauffeur. I was Greg and Brian's chauffeur until I met some girls. Come on, somebody. So probably for like a month, and then I ditched them. I'm like, listen, y'all need to get y'all's own ride to school. I found some girls. We out. But when I would get there in the morning, now this, this um, broadcast isn't about Pastor Greg or his morning routine, but I would get there early, obviously, to make sure, you know, we're not in any rush or whatever. Brian's obviously the firstborn. And so when I would get there, Brian's like sitting, like literally I get there at the same time every day because I'm a firstborn, right? And he's in the same position in his morning routine because he's a firstborn, right? And so when I would get there first thing in the morning, he's got Good Morning America on. This is like back in the day, y'all, before the reign of like tyranny and just weird nonsense in America, okay? So I would walk in and he's eating his breakfast. Now, I did not do any breakfast, like no breakfast. Back then, my first year of school, I was just like, oh, I don't even think I had a coffee yet until I met the girls. When I met the girls, I'm like, finally, like finally, you know? But, but, so he was like finishing up his breakfast and y'all his his like sitting at the table his dress shoes are like sitting right there like he's gonna put his dress shoes on good morning america now again where's where's greg it's like where's waldo except we know exactly where greg is greg would pretty much be climbing out of bed about the time that I was getting there, which means he had 10 minutes to do whatever he did. I hear some chuckles, I hear some laughs in the production suite. Um, he had about 10 minutes to do whatever he did um, in the morning before uh, he came out of his bedroom um, in all of his wonder and we would head off to school. Um, but the point of all that babble is, is that the world has these plans for us. Like you get up, you watch Good Morning America, or maybe you have a coffee, or maybe you work out. You know, there's these different values that the world sets for us as far as how they reset and restart their day. Well, as the body of Christ, we need to realize we're in the world, but we're not of it. And, and when you get into a healthy community, and really that's what this broadcast is all about, whether you're a partner with Choose Life Church or you're just a partner with Dean Shropshire Ministries, you know, in our Bible reading today, um, I was reading in the book of Acts, which we all are, if you are local to Choose Life Church, um, in Acts verse 16, and this is about verse four, and we're kind of like jumping in to some things on this pre-show, but you know what? It is what it is. I'm pretty much our speaker anyway. And so we're already cutting it short um, on top of adding a bunch of blah, blah, blah. So it's fine. Okay. Acts chapter 16. And if you're able to like sit and have your Bible and a journal, gosh, that's my favorite because I feel like that would just be a, another way that you can be completely saturated with whatever the message or the lesson is on every broadcast. But if you're getting ready and like running around, obviously understand that too. Um, Acts chapter 16, verse four. Uh, yeah. Cause if I start at verse one, what, it, it's a whole other message. We can't, we're not doing it. Acts 16, four, then they went from town to town. Now this is Paul and Timothy. They went from town to town, instructing the believers to follow the decisions made by the apostles and the elders in Jerusalem. And so the churches were strengthened in their faith and they grew larger every day. Now, those two verses went off on the inside of me this morning. Um, then they went from town to town, instructing the believers to follow their decisions, to follow their decisions. So I wrote it in my notes this way. These leaders, Paul and Timothy, which um, Timothy 
uh, went on to become a pastor. At the time, he's just apprenticing uh, with Paul as an evangelist and as an apostle. But then later, he received his own church. Um, Paul turned the church at uh, Ephesus uh, over to Timothy, uh, which was a huge congregation. And that's why I love teenagers. Like, I love you. I love you. Like, he was young and he was a pastor of 4,000 member congregation. Okay. So you're never too young, but you've got to get your stuff together. And that's why we're here day after day to help you get your stuff together. Cause sometimes me and pastor faith be like, Hmm, he's like 20 something. What's going on? Like what's going on? He needs to grow up. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. So I wrote in my notes, they taught people to follow them. They taught people to follow them. And I was thinking about the people that call pastors, Dean and Kathy, their pastors, that call Pastor Greg and I, their pastors, that there's like a thing if you will do what we do. Like, it's like a thing. If you will do what we do, you will experience. I mean, Brother Hagin said that for years. People would want prayer. They would want the anointing that he had. They would want the ministry that he had. And he would tell them, you're not willing to do what I did. There is such a thing as following the decisions that your pastors and your leaders made and making those same decisions because those that verse 6, Acts 16, 6 goes on to say what happened. They were strengthened and the churches grew. So, so the, the, the capacity of our life does not grow in disobedience. It only grows in obedience. And sometimes I get it. There's things that we're encouraged to do. There's things that our leaders seem to be proficient in that we're like, well, I don't do it that way, or I've never done it that way, or that's not my personality, or I've always struggled with this. But if you'll bunk all of that, and and, and this was how, this was Paul's MO. He went from town to town, and, and in his ministry, he was teaching people, just follow me. We see that in Hebrews 6, 12, follow me as I follow Christ. Or actually, that's 1 Corinthians um, 11, 1. Follow me as I follow Christ. But Hebrews 6, 12, follow those who through faith and patience are inheriting the promises. So guys, who you follow? And, and like, what's, what's the, what are you going to do? You're going to follow, follow the model and the blueprint of the world and how they move through life in every single season? Or are you going to follow and model the blueprint of the word, which is being modeled for you? If you didn't need a model, if you didn't need these gifts, then God wouldn't have given them to you. But how you use them and how you take advantage of them is going to determine the level of success and the strength that you have for your race. And guys, this is in every season. As a teenager, you're already programmed to growth. That's a season that you're in right now. You're learning so much. And I encourage you to enjoy that. Don't be the kind of person that's like, "Eh, I'm never going to use this. You know, Pastor Greg and I develop a culture of, of knowledge in our marriage. Obviously, first and foremost, knowledge for the word of God, but not just that. Like, I want to know what's going on. And Pastor Greg wants to know how things work. We don't, people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, not just a lack of knowledge as it pertains to the word, but guys, look at what happened in our nation um, several years ago when people don't know what an actual law is, when people don't know the parameters and the boundaries with which government should actually have. And that in America, we don't have rulers. There is a verse in the Bible that says, obey those that have the rule over you. We don't have rulers. We don't have rulers. Show me a picture of the queen of England. Yo, that's a ruler y'all. We have first ladies. Okay. But they're not rulers. Totally different. See this crown, which give me a picture of her in a crown. Y'all see this crown. We, we like, we broke away y'all. We broke away from this crown in the revolutionary war. Watch me. Watch me hit you with a little bit of American history before we're actually even rolling. Okay. Watch me. Watch me. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Look, look how big this crown is. Look how big this crown is. And we said, you know what we said? Bye. Na, 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 
na 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 hey 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 goodbye goodbye to the crown and the throne right there are men who paid an extremely high price for us to be for the people by the people right and actually just an additional fun fact for this pre-show yo um one of the ships well a couple of the ships my favorite kind of ships that i was on last week called a schooner is actually the type of ship show me the picture show me a picture of us uh, one of the ones where i'm like in the same cardigan okay these are schooners y'all and these are the same kind of ships that we used when we defeated the brits in the revolutionary war right I think we should just, God bless America. But I'm telling you, when people don't know that, I was talking with the church partner a couple days ago, and he said he had given a $100 bill to a young adult. Uh, I'm not sure the age. It was a young adult or a teenager, and they didn't know whose face was, they didn't know that was Frank Franklin. Come on, yo. They didn't know that was Benjamin Franklin. And they had no idea any of the accomplishments that Benjamin Franklin had made. I want to tell you, if you stick with Choose Life Church and you stick with Dean Shropshire Ministries and you apply yourself, you will not, not be named among those who are deceived, destroyed, and, and playing games with the enemy's plan. But you're going to experience life. Welcome to Jumpstart. Thank you so much for joining me for this youth edition of Jumpstart. time you say yes, there's also a no. Every time you say no, there's also a yes. And so we want to develop lives of stability and constancy as a young age. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Wednesday's edition of Jumpstart. I want to tell you all week long this week on our broadcast, we've been talking about this book um, that my husband wrote called God Loves You. Um, this is such an incredible resource. And if you don't have it, I want to encourage you to get it. You can get this and so many other resources at there'smorenow.com. I encourage you, especially teenagers, grab these, keep them in your backpack. When you do outreach, um, use these as a tool. Maybe you've got some friends. I remember, um, you know, in... Um, high school, having friends that I was constantly like wanting to share the gospel with. Maybe they were already saved, but maybe they didn't understand what it meant to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Maybe they didn't understand the value and the power of the word and so many other incredible truths that you have the opportunity to grow in every single day or or week after week if you're a part of Choose Life Church and Dean Shropshire Ministry. So even just grabbing a book like this and having it with you. So when things do come up, when people do have questions, you have a resource that can help them. I know, you know, the stigma is that nobody reads anymore, but ultimately when people want answers, they'll do almost anything to experience them or to get them. And so just take advantage of this and so many other incredible resources on there's more now.com um, because you'll hear us talk about the truths in here quite a bit, and, and this is a great resource for you. We're talking today, the title of the broadcast as we've been building into this week is Shine Like a Diamond Part 2. Now, before I jump into today's Bible's lesson on a previous broadcast, I mentioned that I would share with you one of my favorite like moisturizers that's just like that extra glow. Now, honestly, um, Pastor Greg is always kind of like on me because my face is, is typically too short shiny for camera. But you know what I like to say to that? Get over it. Get over it. Listen, your problems are not my problems. So if my face is not the way it needs to be, you're not going to tell me to fix my face. You're going to fix your lights. Amen. Um, and so anyway, this is Glam Glow. And I don't know that we have like, this isn't level up broadcast. So we don't have multiple camera shots. Uh, did you like that little dig I just did? We don't have like multiple. This is like the AM. Do you know what I'm saying? Like the AM. Like we barely got our eyes open for this broadcast. I, I mean, you like the level of humor that we're all experiencing in here. I asked for like a little bit of coffee a second ago and it was like, no, everyone was like, what? 
I'm like, is there like a language breakdown going on in here this morning? Like coffee, coffee. I just put a little coffee in the coffee cup. Like it was hilarious. Okay, so we don't have multiple camera angles. So I'm not able to like zoom in, um, but Glam Glow, um, and if you're local, I've heard like a rumor has it. See what's going on? Like there's just so many songs today. Um, rumor has it um, that we're getting an Ulta. I don't know if you can get this at Ulta actually now that I say that, but you know where you can get it? Dillard's. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glam Glow. Um, so it's mega illuminating moisturizer and um, it hydrates, it gives radiance, it brightens. Um, and so they have different levels of, or different colors based on your complexion. And so um, I like to use this one that obviously matches my complexion. So anyway, look, if you shop at Dillard's, you recognize the proof of purchase. Um, so anyway, Dillard's has it. Great moisturizer for shining bright. If you're a guy and you like just tuned me out, I'm back. We're done talking about girl stuff. Um, welcome to Jumpstart. Shine bright like a diamond. Guys, it's important that we do our job. Listen, I want to do my job. I want to do what nobody wants like a camera that doesn't work. Nobody wants a phone that doesn't work. Nobody wants a car that doesn't work. I don't want to be a believer that doesn't do the job that God assigned me to do. And we find that job and it's tied to light in Matthew chapter five, verses 14 through 15. It says, you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out. I want you to say that phrase, shine out. Shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly father. I want you to consider this statement as we build today. Your fellowship determines your watts. Your fellowship determines your watts, meaning who you spend time with and how you spend your time and who you're around is going to determine how bright you shine. You know, when Faith and I were kids, I've heard Pastor Kathy tell a story of a time when she took Pastor Faith to a daycare. Now, it wasn't anything like Kid City Daycare because Kid City Daycare is breathtaking. It's absolutely a wonderful, wonderful business. But she was dropped off at this daycare and Pastor Kathy picked her up later. And I don't even know the circumstances as to why she was dropped off at this daycare. I just know that when she was picked up, Pastor Kathy was pretty sure she was demon possessed. Like she was acting crazy. And y'all, Pastor Faith she is now what she's always been. She's fun. She's pretty even keel. She doesn't have extreme highs, extreme lows, like just kind of like wakes up with a joke, wakes up with fun. She's always been like that. So my mom knew, okay, something, there's a problem over here. Like something's not right. And she never took her to that daycare again and spent the entire evening basically detoxing my little sister, p potentially casting demons out of her, spanking her. I'm not sure the whole depth of it, um, but I do know that even from an early age, you can sense, um, you know, I know in youth ministry, um, I can tell uh, even without knowing a calendar that we're back to school um, because there's a different, you can't be in a dark environment for eight hours. Think about whenever you come out of the movie theater and it's like a matinee. Um, your eyes aren't adjusted to the sun. And so you've been in a dark room for a long time and then you walk out and it's like, it's, it's, it, it, there's, there's an adjustment. So when you're in a dark environment uh, for a long period of time and you're not doing your job and you're not committed to doing your job, it weighs down your countenance. It affects your brilliance, so to speak. You know, diamonds are literally classed by their brilliance or their ability to reflect and reflect light. And so we want as believers to be proficient. What does that mean? I want to do my job well. I want to make an A, so to speak, as it pertains to shining bright. I'd, what's, the, what's the use 
think about it. What's the use of a dull diamond? What's the use of a dull knife? It's my job to protect my light. And so when we look at this example or this responsibility that we have as it pertains to a diamond, I want to show you because again, you're personally responsible. You're personally responsible. It's your job to take what we've been given in the assignment and in the tools to do the assignment and to put them to work. Look at Isaiah. Look what happens with me. This is Isaiah 8 verses 20 through 22 when we don't do this, okay? Look to God's instructions and teachings. Again, this is Isaiah 8, 20 through 22. Look to God's instructions and teachings. People who contradict his word are completely in the dark. People who contradict his word are completely in the dark. Do you know that you can believe the word of God and still contradict the word of God? Because it's not enough to believe it. We have to do it. So you can't just come to church and be in agreement with what you hear and leave and not change anything. That will make your life a contradiction. So the goal is to come to church, to see that as like your look in the mirror. This is the blueprint. This is what it should be. So I'm going to go home and I'm going to make changes. So it's not just that I look at the teachings or that I listen, but I make changes in my life. Look to God's instructions and teachings. People who contradict his word are completely in the dark. They will go from one place to another weary and hungry. You know, I think I mentioned it recently in Jumpstart that we have on Sunday mornings here at Choose Life Church. Um, Galatians chapter six, verses six through nine talks about not growing weary in well-doing. But, but I brought out this truth that honestly, when I look back over my life, um, any weariness that I experience, because it's like, like I, I yielded to that. Like that was on me because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. So literally the moment you make Jesus the Lord of your life, heaviness cannot stand in your place. Heaviness cannot stand against you. Just like sickness can't stay in your body. Lack can't stay attached to you. Depression, anxiety, fear, those things like they don't stick. It's like having like waterproof shoes or like a, a poncho in the rain. What's the purpose of those materials? They repel water. They don't attract water. When you have a, you know, a towel, obviously that a, a sponge that holds on to the moisture. So you would wear a different fabric when you're going out in the rain because it repels water, right? So you've got to know that the presence of God in your life repels. It's a repellent against the forces of darkness. So it, it's like, have you ever heard somebody, especially we just, you know, kind of came through summer and they, they end up after a day in the sun, completely sunburned. And you're like, what happened? And they're like, I don't know. I use sunscreen. And it's like, did you, did you? Because when you do, it will repel the effects, the harsh effects of that sun. Guys, what you have to know, like when I go into a room, the enemy's not like taunting me. Like you got to get out. You got to get out. Like you're not bugging me. You're not making waves in here. So anything that the enemy has been able to do in your life, because look at this verse right here. It says, why are these people weary? Because they contradict his word. Guys, when the word of the Lord comes to you, whether in the written word or in that still small voice, and you don't change, you don't do something with it. You've just opened the door to weariness. So anytime you're weary in well-doing, Paul told us not to be, which means we have control over it, but you've got to know you open the door to it. If I get a package in the mail that I didn't want, that I, I got an email the other day and it's like, I don't want that. I'm not responding to it just because it came. So know that you have control over this issue of being weary because the enemy can't do anything in your life without your permission, without your authorization and disobedience authorizes him.
And, and let me give you two quick thoughts as it pertains to that disobedience. Anything that's not of faith is sin. Anything that you try to do in your own might and in your own power, any way or attempt that you make to fix your own problems or to, to add to your life, that's, that's going to open the door to weariness. Because if it's not from God, it can't be for God. So, so any lack of faith in your life, that is, that's disobedience, as well as violating the law of love. And this isn't just loving other people. You know, I know people who are very kind and they're very loving with others, but they don't defend God's order of love according to Mark 12 30, which is love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, then love your neighbor as you love yourself. And they don't, they don't love God. Maybe they're very kind. They're very forgiving. They love other people, but they don't love his house. They don't love him. They don't, they don't, they don't put him in the number one spot in their life, so to speak. And so when you violate love, loving God, loving yourself and loving others, that's disobedience. And that's a contradiction to the word. So anytime you violate the law of faith, anytime you violate the law of love, if, if, let me say it this way. If you're weary, which law did you violate? If you're weary, which law did you violate? Because there's a flow in the plan of God. There's a flow in doing what he's called you to do right now as a, if you're in eighth grade and your life is hard, there's a problem. But at the same time, if you're 75 and you're weary, that's a problem. Because the Bible says, and this is one of my favorite verses, and I stand on it because again, and we talked about that earlier in the broadcast, like the world programs you. They have a program for you in every season of your life. I'm not, I, I don't care what their programming is. You know, there's probably a lot of things on television today, a lot of programs. I'm not tuning into any of that. I'm not tuning into the program that the world, which that worldly system is rooted in darkness. So, so it's like you go to CVS and they're already programming. You better get this checked. You better, I know people that bought into that and kept getting things checked and getting things checked. And before long, they had the very thing that they were thinking they were getting checked in early stages enough to prevent. What, what are you actually doing? There's, listen, if you will, and I think we said this in an earlier broadcast or at some point, if you will make this your plan A, you will never need a plan B. You will never need a plan B. If this is plan A, you will never need a plan B, okay? Just like when, when you know, pastors Dean and Kathy were raising um, Faith and I, you know, their, their parents or their friends uh, would tell them, hey, you need to... You know, you need to let those girls get out. Um, they need to, um, they need to date around. They need to whatever. Like, and my dad's like, what? Like, I'm pretty sure anything that world says that they need to do, we're going to do the exact opposite of that. Like if, if, if he knew them while they were in their mother's womb, how much more is he going to have an intricate design for every single flow? Like every single detail y'all don't, don't, I don't, I took delight when I was your age. And if you will follow me, if you will follow me, you will experience the same success. I took delight. And like, if they said to do it, I did the exact opposite. Like even like, like a games and stuff, you know, it was like, this is a student section. I'm not sitting with the students. I'm sitting in the reserve section. <laughs> I'm not going to sit with the students. What are the students doing? You know what I'm saying? I enjoy the game, but I'm going to go to the game with the people that I want to go to the game with. I'm not sitting, and, and that's not me trying to be better. That's just me recognizing I'm not like everybody else, okay? Proverbs 9, in every season. Proverbs 9, verse 11. This verse came up in my spirit um, earlier this morning. Wisdom will multiply your days. That's, that's God's plan for you when the world says that things are going to start falling apart, God says they're not going to fall apart. Wisdom will multiply your days and add years to your life. If you become wise, you will be the one who benefits. What about Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18? It says, wisdom is 
and this is the Living Bible or the New Living Bible. I like it better in um, another translation, but it says wisdom is a true, oh, that's that's three, excuse me, Proverbs 4, 18. The way of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn. What is that? Light, light. The way of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn, which shines ever brighter until the full day of light. Now, again, new living. The King James says the path of the righteous gets brighter and brighter and brighter. I want you, young person, to have an expectation that as bright as my light is right now, it's going to be brighter three years from now. I'm not going to be an on fire for God Christian in the summer and then by December things have dimmed down. No, I'm going to continue to get brighter and brighter and brighter. But again, your fellowship determines your watts. How bright you guys know the difference between a 60 watt bulb and a 120 watt bulb. And so take the light that you have right now and determine if it's going to get brighter, I'm going to have to cooperate with that light, just like the brilliance of a diamond. And so we started talking about on an earlier broadcast, exactly how a diamond is so shiny and how it reflects light. First of all, just by being around light, like on a surface level, there's a certain element of brilliance brilliance or bright that's that's emanated that way. And so we said, when you come to church, when you hear the word of God, even just like right now, you know, I know this morning when I woke up this morning, my countenance was not bright. I trust me. And it wasn't because I hadn't put any moisturizer on. It was because your girl was sleepy. So there was like, it was not bright, right? But what did I do? First thing, I put on a message. I started listening to the word of God. And before you know it, things started perking up. And again, not because of just the moisturizer, but because of the word of God, things started perking up. So we see it in church all the time. People come in, there's a heaviness, they look one way, they leave in a totally different place, but it doesn't stop there. Because we said the second way that diamonds get really, really bright is through what's called refraction, which means the light moves through all the intricate parts of the diamond. And so that means we've got to take the word of God and go deeper with it. And, and really, when, when you think about going deeper with the word of God, I want you to think about um, this, this process, so to speak. And it's really simple to remember. It's SRS, SRS. If I'm going to go deeper with it, I've got to see it, I've got to receive it, and I've got to say it. SRS. You know, there's some things in our life that we know are a problem right? Certain attitudes, certain frustrations, maybe certain fears that we're aware of, like, Houston, Houston, we have a problem. Like, you know, like it's there. You're aware of it, right? And so what do you have to do? A lot of people just ignore it and act like it's not there, okay? Well, that's not gonna help and, and, and won't produce the freedom and the joy that's available to us in true relationship with the word. So when you see the problem, you've got to go at it. And I'm amazed at how few Christians actually take this word and get into it themselves. Don't be that way. Look at, if you, if you have sex with everything that moves. Here's it. We have a problem. What? You can't do that. If you're bound in addiction, if you watch things you don't need to watch, if you battle thought, do you understand what I'm saying? Like our life of faith should not be a struggle. It should be a, a victory, victory after victory. When you think about King David f defeating the Philistines, when you think about Joshua and the people of Israel, once they finally got through the wilderness, it was like one victory after another, after another, after another. Doesn't mean that you don't face things, but like, the people of Israel, and still to this day, guys, Jews have an expectation for victory. They have an expectation for wealth. They don't expect to be poor. They don't expect to be defeated. They don't expect to lose. We being restored to a brand new covenant, but still having some of that old as it pertains to the blessing of Abraham, guys, we should be programmed for victory. So when you see a problem in your life, we can even just Google like verses on fear. And all of those verses will pop up. And so what you have to do is you have to see what the word says about whatever it is, 
the darkness, right? The little dark places. You know, I kind of mentioned yesterday, you know, I had a little bit of an attitude and just like, you know, it's like, well, I have to go. What does the word say about that little attitude, right? I've got it. I've got it. I know that I have that attitude. I know what the word says. So I have to receive it. I have to make it mine. I have to say, okay, if this says it, this isn't what Pastor Dean believes. This isn't what Pastor Kathy believes. I receive this to myself and even making it personal, right? It's just like when somebody takes a song that's a a classic and amazing and they use the same lyrics and potentially the same chords, but they sing it in their own way. Guys, you make it so personal. That's that's why even like you hear me say, like when I take verses from the word of God and I turn it into a confession, I'm receiving it. I'm saying, oh, wow, that's in there. That's mine. And then I'm speaking it out of my mouth. See, in James chapter one, verse 21, the Bible says, so get rid of all uncleanliness, right? Meaning you've got to do that. You've got to get rid of all these dark things that have stored up in your soul. You've got to get rid of them. It says in the rampant outgrowth of wickedness and in a humble, remember I've said before, and I'll say it again, pride keeps you from growing. Pride keeps you from freedom. Can I say it this way? Pride keeps you from everything that God is and everything that God has planned. Get rid, James 1 21, get rid of all uncleanliness and the rampant outgrowth of wickedness. And in a humble, gentle, modest spirit, receive and welcome the word which implanted and rooted in your hearts. Who implants it? Who, see your pastors can't take the word of God and make it meet your dirt. Now, they may expose, right? They may expose, but only you can, you are the CEO of your heart. Only you can control what's going on in your guts, right? So you have to do that. It says, receive and welcome the word of God, which implanted and rooted in your hearts contains the power to what? to save your souls. Do you know that there's a lot of believers walking around that have been reborn in the nature and the admonition of the Lord, but their souls are not saved. They don't think saved thoughts. They don't make saved choices and their emotions are running them out of the will of God instead of into the will of God. Guys, you can't get salvation for your soul any other way, but through you personally taking this word and acknowledging what it says and then making it personal and then speaking it out of your mouth because you are a creative spirit. You are made in the image of God. So everything that you say is producing in your life. So if you don't decide uh, how many of us have said, I'm just so mad. I'm just so mad. I'm just so frustrated. I'm just, I'm just so frustrated. I'm just so annoyed with them. The more you say that, what does that do? That reinforces that emotion, that reinforces that strife, that reinforces that imagination. And, and here's the thing that you have to know. Your thoughts are actual matter. And then when they turn into words, man, they start producing. Think of it like a dollar bill. Think of a dollar bill as a thought. That dollar bill is something. See, we don't, we don't acknowledge that thoughts are actual somethings because we can't see them and feel them and hold them like we could a dollar bill. But a thought like a dollar bill, it's like a thing. If, if we're sitting in this room right now, which I am, and someone comes in and brings a dollar bill, or let's say a hundred dollar bill and sits it on the edge of this couch right here. That changed the room. Did it not? You would wonder whose a hundred dollar bill is that? Why did they put that hundred dollar bill there? I wonder what she's going to do with that hundred dollar bill. And then you would think I want a hundred dollar bill. Where can I get a hundred dollar bill? Maybe she's going to give that hundred dollar bill to me. If somebody put a hundred dollar bill right here, It would change the relationship that I have with you right now because it showed up and it would be a new thing into our relationship. Guys, your thoughts are like that. So what you think about other people, even if you don't say it to them, 
it changes the relationship that you have with those people. I heard a minister tell a story one time about her and her daughter, and they were getting ready to go shopping. And um, she thought to herself, my daughter, literally, I mean, and you're like, hopefully my mom doesn't think like this about me. And if she does, hopefully she tells me. But anyway, they were getting ready to go shopping. And this mom was thinking about her daughter like she doesn't look very good today. <laughs> like her outfit doesn't look good. Not like she looks sick, but like she doesn't look pretty. <laughs> Basically, I mean, this didn't happen to me. This happened to somebody else, okay? And the, my daughter doesn't look pretty today. Like, she doesn't look good today. And and she didn't say anything. She just thought it. Again, the, do, the $100 bill shows up. I don't say anything about it. You don't say anything about it. But it showed up. See, that's like a thought. So she just has this thought about her daughter. And she said all day long, her daughter literally acted the way that she looked. All day long. She acted the way that she looked. Now, I'm going to preach to myself Monday through Friday, whether you guys show up or not. But I assure you, I have had a lifetime of experience in this way. When I think a certain way about people, I didn't tell them anything. I didn't tell them. Because, like, let's be honest. Sometimes you think things about people that are, like, not good thoughts about them. And maybe they're the result of what they've done or what they've said, or in the case of that minister, how they look, right? But it's like what you think about adds to those thoughts, add to the relationship. And if it's a wrong thought, see, if you keep thinking wrongly about your life, that's a thing. We say that all the time, like it's a thing. Guys, your thoughts are things. So some of them, you're aware of them, but it's like, you can't like come to church, put on the shirt, like get ready to serve and, and like have darkness in you <laughs> and expect to have salvation for your souls. So my question is why struggle? Why stay in the dark when Jesus already provided for you to be in the light it's absolutely lazy to not just acknowledge, okay, you, know, you don't do that. If, if something's wrong at your house, all things being equal, you take care of business. You've got like a leaky pipe. You've got a flood. No one's like, oh yeah, the house just flooded. I, we're, we're just standing in three inches of water right now. You know, the house flooded. You know, the garage door's busted. You know, the refrigerator's broken. No one's just sitting around. No, you're on the phone immediately. But yet you've got, problems. You've got things in your life, uh, problems in your weight, problems in your attitude, problems with the subject. Y'all, when Pastor Faith and I, our parents didn't have to tell us, like, if I'm struggling, I need a tutor. I'm not made to struggle. I'm going to have to do whatever I have. I'm not going to, I'm going to have to spend more time on homework tonight. I'm not just going to show up tomorrow and be like, well, I'm just not good at school. I just, I don't know how to read. I don't know how to do it. No, I'm going to have to get, I'm going to have to spend, it's like you come to church and you know, this is the best life. This is a good life. I'm on a roll here. I'm on a mission. God is good. Hallelujah. And then I go home and there's problems. You've got to see what the word of God says. You've got to receive it as your own. And then you got to say it. And what happens? Light always dispels darkness. Light will always drive it out because what's the alternative? And we'll close here today. They'll go from one place to another. Back to Isaiah 8. <clears throat> Excuse me. Isaiah 8, 21. They will go from one place to another, weary and hungry. And because they're hungry, now they're mad. They're going to rage and curse their king and their God. And isn't that what happens? Now you're mad at the church. Now you're mad at me. I'm not nobody's, I'm nobody's problem. They're going to rage. They're going to curse the king and their God. They'll look to heaven, heaven and down to earth. But wherever they look, there will be trouble. Meaning you, wherever you go, like Pastor Dean says, there you are. New church, same you. New town, same you. Wherever they look, there will be trouble and anguish and dark despair. And then eventually they'll be thrown out into the darkness. You have responsibility for the light that you've been given, but you've got to work that light out of just this external presence. 
where you have this outward relationship with the word and determine it's going to be an internal work as well. I love you guys. I'm so thankful to be with you today and I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning into this broadcast. Listen, most of the time I spend teaching believers, people who have already made Jesus the Lord of their life. But you may have come across this broadcast and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. Or honestly, you're not confident and sure about your relationship with him. I would love to lead you in a prayer so that you can not only be sure, but you can know for certain that you're going to spend forever in heaven and you're going to have access to heaven on earth, just like we talked about in this broadcast. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father, right now, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. I believe all the sin of the world was laid on him so I could be right. He was broken in every way so that I could be whole. Right now, I exchange my life for his. Jesus, come into my life. Make me brand new. And from this day forward, I'm going to learn all I can about serving you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And congratulations on making the best decision of your life. Listen, here at Dean Shropshire Ministries, we want to help you in your new relationship with God. So I want to invite you to go to there'smorenow.com. Click the tab that says, I just got saved because we want to send you some free resources that are going to help you in your new relationship with God. Partnering with DSM gives you an opportunity to invest into the kingdom of God and help people step into all that God has for them. The seed you sow in Dean Shropshire Ministries will produce a great harvest. Welcome everybody today to Health Bites. We're so glad you're joining us. You know, I truly believe that these Health Bites are gonna help you. See, the word is going forth into you. And as I said yesterday, you have to be a doer of the word. You have to do what uh, you've been instructed to do. That's why James says, be doers of the word, not hearers only.